Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Back by popular request, I've got Kelly out here to be involved in this next video. You guys want to see her way more than you want to see me, so I'm fine with that. I like to see her more than I like to see me myself. <laughs> anyway, what we want to talk about today in this episode is should homesteaders use credit cards? What do you think, Kel? Yes. Yes? You two-bit... <laughs> Why do you think people should use credit cards? Well, I mean, there is always a need for credit cards. Um, emergencies, um, to build credit, um, for any large purchases that you need to make in the future. So, got to start somewhere. Spoken like an accountant that you are. All right. <clears throat> well, I think, um, I think there obviously there's going to be people that agree or disagree with what we say, but that's the fun of YouTube. Um, but I think you really, when you look at credit cards, you really have to ask the first question is, are we going to play the game? And that game is simply, are we going to try to keep up with culture and society? You know, the way, the way our um, entire culture is all monetized right now. It, it's a money-based society that you know, really requires credit to do a lot. So you say, well, no, I'm not playing the game, Troy. That's why I decided to homestead. I'm going to pay cash for everything. And that's fine, and I totally respect that. And in fact, I, I, I think that could be a lot simpler for all of us if we went back to a, a cash or even a bartering society. But you tend to limit yourself. Yeah, 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 I think so. Um, I think when you, when you use just cash, obviously you, you could slow down an opportunity to, to move on something. And, um, I, and I think there's a lot of supplies to, to maybe younger people. You know, we're in our, our mid forties. If you're listening to this, <laughs> who said that? If, if you're, if you're watching this in your, in your twenties, then I think there's some benefit to saying, well, okay, I'm going to play the game. I'm not going to get caught up in the game, but I'm going to play the game, uh, for my benefit exclusively. And so when you look at that and say, okay, well, what does that really mean? Well, if you decide to pay cash for everything, you're, you're obviously not going to have debt. You're not going to establish um, any of those negatives, which is good. But the real issue that you run into is credit or credit score affects more than just your ability to, to get into debt. Um, according to a Forbes article that I was just reading, there are a lot of things that a credit score, a bad credit score, could affect. And again, if you don't have credit, if you always pay cash for everything, what's your credit score, Kelly? Zero. <laughs> Zero, exactly. <laughs> you've got a big old goose egg. Um, if you haven't established any credit, you don't, you've always paid cash, then you, you don't have credit, you have a zero credit score. And you need at least 550 for anybody to dance with you. So if you look at that and say, I pay cash for everything, I don't, I don't want to get a credit card, I don't plan on going into debt, that's why, where I want to stay, Troy, so I'm okay with having a zero credit score. But according to this Forbes article, that employers are now looking at credit scores to determine, use that as a factor to determine if you're employable or not. So again, if you're working full-time on your homestead, great. But if you'd have to be in a situation where you need to be employed, your credit score could determine whether or not you're employable or not. Um, I know specifically, I know of insurance companies, I have a couple of clients that are insurance agents, and we talk about this all the time, that... They are now looking at credit scores to determine your insurance premium. Mm -hmm. A low credit score, they see you as more of a risk than somebody with a high credit score. That is about as unfair as it gets. I think it's ridiculous, but that's the way the world works right now. So a, a low credit score can actually make your auto premium, your home premium. So if you're going to get some liability insurance on your homestead or, or some, uh, some home coverage on your, your homestead house in case it burns, you may be paying more simply because you have a lousy credit score. And then the Forbes article even points out relationships, which I think is kind of funny that you know, all the things we worry about in relationships, the things people want to look at is, um, and, they're, and they're addressing credit score as the first issue, that um, it was kind of funny. There's a quote from a marriage counselor that, uh, who was actually a financial planner as well that said, uh, couples really need to sit down and review their credit scores because that'll tell you a lot about the person you're about to marry. If they have a low credit score, then maybe they're not very trustworthy with their money. Again, I think there's more important things to look at before you get married than what your That's spouse's right. credit score is. But those are the things that come into play there. So you may say, I want to pay cash for everything, and that's great, but it could hinder uh, your ability to do other stuff. Again, be employed, have insurance, 
get married. <laughs> The other big thing that, that we see, and I see this all the time on the homesteading forums, is where people say, man, I found a, I found a great piece of property. I'm now ready to make that plunge to get my, um, to get my homestead land. I, I found a great deal on some raw land, but the bank won't loan me any, any money because I have a horrible credit score. Or my credit score is too low where I don't have any credit. And you see people just run into that. And some of you may say, well, good, you shouldn't buy it if you don't have cash. But I lean to the other side uh, of the fence on that to say, if you're young and you have a regular income, you can use your age and your work ability, you know, hopefully you don't get hit by a train or disabled, that type of thing, that you can work for the next 20, 30, 40 years to pay off this investment in land. So to me, that's where um, having good credit would make sense if you're looking to purchase your homestead land. You know, if we waited till we could afford to pay cash for this property, we'd probably still be waiting. And you know, I don't want to start from scratch when I'm in my mid 40s, nor do I want to start when I'm in my 50s or 60s. Some people do, and that's fine. Hey, I pay cash for everything, uh, but now I'm ready to get a loan to, to buy my dream homestead place. Then you're just out of luck. So, to come back to our original question, should homesteaders have or use credit cards? And Kelly said yes. I would agree with that, yes. But you want to use them wisely. Tell them, Kel. Well, if you're going to have credit, I think you want to, the wise thing is always going to be to use it and pay it off. Use it and pay it off. And just don't let your balance get out of control. Um, it's there for emergencies. It's there to build your credit score. Um, it's not there for you to go out and purchase that new tractor or to purchase, you know, high dollar things that maybe you should be saving for, but it is there for emergencies. Yeah, I think to establish a credit score, you could just simply start with a credit card. Again, if you've got zero credit, if you have a credit score of zero or you're coming out of college and you have no track record there, then start with something simple. Again, a credit card is usually the easiest form of credit to get. And for somebody who has a really low credit score, they're going to give you a credit card with a healthy interest rate of somewhere in the 20s. And, and that stinks on ice. You don't want to be using that for expenses. You don't want to carry a balance on something that has that type of interest. But if you, even if you get that, you can say, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I want to go pay cash for this item, this, this you know, article of clothing, whatever consumable. You say, I'm going to pay cash for it. Instead, you've got the cash in your hand, pay with a credit card. As soon as, you get, as soon as you get home or as soon as you get that credit card statement, pay that off. So you're showing that you, you carried a balance, you paid it off, you carried a balance, you paid it off. Uh, just be very diligent about that. And you'll start to see as your credit score builds that you'll get additional credit card offers and you don't have to go looking for them. They'll come looking for you. Oh, yes. And uh, so or you, even if you are going to purchase a, a tractor, large purchase like that with cash then maybe use your credit card exactly. first and then pay it off. Yeah, yeah. so anything like that that you're ready to pay cash for, have that credit card start on that. And that's usually the best place to start. As you see, like if you were going to get a car loan, then of course establishing the credit with that credit card first is going to help. Um, you, you, you get that car loan, again, it may have a lousy interest rate, but at least it's something that you can work toward. Again, make sure you've got a plan to pay that off. You know, and, and as the thing you made it out, pointed out, Kelly, emergencies. You know, you think about, you think about in a situation with an emergency. If you, if you have a, a, let's say you have a vehicle, and that's how you get to and from your job, and you got to have a job to be able to afford your house or homestead. You're not able to homestead full time, and you have that vehicle. Well, that vehicle conks out. Something goes bad. A transmission goes out, and you've got a couple thousand dollars to have to replace that transmission. If you've got zero cash to cover that and all you've got is a credit card or no car, then logically, you know, use the credit card to pay for the transmission repair so you can still work to still get a job to pay your other bills. And again, it may take you a while, may set you back in your plans because now I gotta take my extra money and pay off this transmission. But it's just, it's just a logical safety net to have there. Again, if you have a credit card that's active and it has zero balance on it, it's not hurting you. I mean, it actually, your credit score is affected there uh, in, in a positive way, but it's not hurting you. Now, again, you could argue that, well, if I was going to get a mortgage, that uh, un unsecured debt, all that, blah, 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 whatever. I'm not a financial planner, but um, there is some argument there. But a, a credit card with a zero balance just in your wallet 
is just another safety net to keep you from really being in a, a situation that could cost you your job, could cost you, you know, your livelihood or just other income. So it may be that safety net that you need, but don't do like we did out of college and we're like, hey, we gotta have an emergency steak dinner, woo, let's go. <laughs> so, got a lot of control there. Um, or even for travels. I mean, it's always good to have that when you're gonna be traveling because you never know what could happen when you're far from home and there's an accident or there's yeah. vehicle repairs again. Well, again, in full disclosure, we have to say, and we've talked about this way, way back in some previous videos, it's taken us just over 20 years to get out of credit card debt. So that is not, you know, our example is not an example to live by. Uh, we definitely got out of control. We, we were playing the game way too well. We had too good a credit score and we took, took advantage of that to our disadvantage, obviously. Um, but yeah, as we've gotten older and wiser and, and we've been able to pay things off, uh, then we've been able to, to negate all that debt. But I still keep, because of my business, I still keep a line of credit. I still have uh, company credit cards. I have, um, uh, do have a truck payment for my company because there's a tax write-off associated with that. There's, there's all kinds of things that benefit me from a business standpoint. So I don't want to be hypocritical and say, oh, we don't have any debt. We don't do this and that when I've got tons of debt right now just associated with the business and associated with open lines of credit. So, well, again, not the most exciting topic. We thought we'd take, uh, take advantage of this nice cool evening and sit out here in the front yard and but just... what is exciting is the greenery. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yes, there's actually stuff greening up. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can see, we purposely <laughs> sat here on this point of the yard so the red bud tree in the background, this, this splash of purple <laughs> would show up. <clears throat> you didn't see the last video, but I was actually making a comment that we're about ready to go from every background being brown to every background being green. So in a couple months, we'll be so sick of green. We'll be like, please <laughs> let the leaves change. Yeah. So uh, again, let us know what you all think. Again, kind of a, a two-sided subject here about credit. Um, I, I definitely could be swayed either way. I know there's good and bad that goes along with it. So be, feel free to comment below and get some good debate going like we've been having here recently. And uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Take us home, Kelly. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Red Tool House Farm. Or check us out on our website at redtoolhouse.com. Take care, everybody.